Make sure a building doesn't go on fire, burn down or kill people while doing so. Pretty clear. Make a building sustainable. Define sustainable. We are building like the Romans. It's brick and mortar. Essentially, nothing has changed in 2000 years. It's not aspirational to be sustainable. How do we know that if someone says that they're being sustainable, that they're actually being sustainable? We can't keep building the way that we've been building. We are in peak greenwash, really. We are living now in an age where everything has to do uh, with profitability. You're trying to do the same thing over and over again on each project and it's not working out. You're financially actually incentivized to just knock down and start again. And sometimes it feels like you're banging your head off a brick wall. It shouldn't be an option, it should be a must. It's, it's what we have to do. I think there's still a general lack of understanding of what it means to be better envir environmentally, purposefully avoiding <laughs> sustainable. We just are completely disconnected. We wake up in climate controlled environments with heating or air conditioning. We eat food without ever seeing a field. We jump in a car, which again has a climate controlled environment. We work in man-made environments such as offices or online. And so you end up being utterly disconnected. So it's no surprise that we've got this problem now where we have a society built on consumerism and waste without a true understanding of what the consequences are. Unless you actually tackle that systemic problem, you're never gonna create solutions that work. Can you introduce yourself? I can. Uh, my name is Rachel Hulahan. I am an architect and sustainability coordinator at Orms. So my name is John Miller. I'm a furniture designer. Jeremy Grove, um, managing director of Sibley Grove, interior design and architecture practice. I'm Simone Sass. I run I run Studio Sass, an interior design studio. I'm Nico, uh, and I'm an architect. It's become a trend. This piece, this bench, this rug, wooden floors. This rug is actually made from plastic bottles cut from responsibly managed forests. My inbox every morning, our sustainability pledge, blah, blah, blah. This is our story, believe us, we're nice people. Fast fashion, fast interiors, lifestyle. Look at my house today, it looks different to how it did last week. Trends provide short-term economic benefits. By following trends, you're building obsolescence into your design. Trends are problematic. You can always pick something that makes you look good. You're beautifying spaces and you're working with trends to create sort of transient environments. So none of that stuff really has a soul or any long-term value. I, I just noticed that for all the sort of positive talk about the mainstreaming of sustainability, how quickly it just drops like a stone. The main conflicts between commercial and environmental factors are about how we feel about those entities. When you naturally set those up to be competing factors, as soon as the economy hits a difficult patch, then the money side always takes over. We've been living in this sort of fictitious world of abundance for the last 20, 30 years, and I think it's definitely gonna change. I'm voting with my pound. We make thousands of buying choices for our clients. What do we do to mitigate the negative impacts of the redundancy? As soon as you've purchased something, you're being given a new reason to purchase something else. I'm relying on our suppliers doing what they say they're doing. And so that's going to start to cost their business. Waste is actually not really a circle, it's a spiral. Everyone's part of the same system of consumerism and never being fulfilled enough. Essentially, it's about a conscious buying decision. Understand the facts, understand the implications, and then make a choice. I've always been conscious about trying to do good. And, you know, I, I definitely believe that you, 
you get back what you put out. I, I feel like I have a responsibility. If not me, then who? And if not now, when? I want to be able to tell my kids I tried my best. Sustainability is incredibly misleading. And there's a lot of people who want to do good things, but they're being misled by products that aren't actually solving the problem. You know, put yourself out there and say, let's try and all be really sustainable. It's quite difficult to know what is sustainable and what's not sustainable. This whole sort of greenwash thing makes people believe that they're they're absolutely doing the right thing, whereas really it's just sort of scratching the surface. And a common sort of reaction to that is to get angry and to judge people and say they don't want to do enough and they're evil business people. I felt very much the same way. A lot of the aggression and the stuff that you see with the protests manifests as a result of people not seeing a clear vision as to what the solution is. People don't know what they want until they see it. Henry Ford who said, if I would have asked people what they want, they would have set a faster horse. So here we are outside Wunderhaus now, and I'd like to point out to you a few things that hopefully you don't see. What you don't see is that we have 12 kilowatt of photovoltaic power on the roof. Another feature is our cladding. It's com completely maintenance free. It doesn't discolor, it's UV stable. And most importantly, it's made out of recycled plastic bottles and wood fiber to 95% and is 100% recyclable. The all important car charging point, when the technology of the car being able to run the house with its battery comes into the into effect. To the rear of the house, we have a seven and a half meter panoramic window, which provides incredible ambient light and a wonderful atmosphere inside, as I will show you now. Triple glazed windows, of course. And here you go, this is the open plan living. If we go upstairs to the gallery, and here again, if you see volume is of the essence and your connection to the downstairs living space. Every room in the house has access to the outside. Houses are always individually built and hence they always go wrong. We're trying to create a product that has all the virtues of a product, which means uh, they appeal to a lot of people, uh, the certainty of performance, uh, value for money, um, all, all the virtues of a, of a product but in form of a house. We're living in the 21st century and that our houses perform so poorly in, in a time when we have an acute climate crisis and a massive energy crisis is just not acceptable. If you're able to monitor what you're actually doing, uh, and to see what you're doing and, and when your daughter spends three hours on the hairdryer that you you know that it consumes a lot of energy so you start once you become aware of what energy you're using and when you're using it i think you start automatically adapting a little bit to it too the tile company that we work with where tile has been re-engineered and designed so that the tile is fully recyclable so this tile can basically be ground down and turned into new tiles um, which is a problem in the tile industry because waste products generally have to just go into um, landfill. Okay so this is one of our projects that we've just um, we've just completed. We were involved in all the elements of the design and build of this 13,000 square foot house in Greater London. It was just a matter of incorporating sustainability but in kind of an invisible way. The fact that the sustainability is actually quite invisible so if I hadn't have told you or if my, I hadn't told my clients they wouldn't know that this this rug, for example, which looks and feels, it feels amazing, it feels so soft, you would never know that it was made from plastic bottles. That you're doing good for the planet by buying the right products, I think is just a win-win for everyone. You have two cycles in a circular economy. The technological cycle, which is things like components and machines, which in theory should be able to be disassembled and repaired and components replaced and 
the bad component to send for recycling, but ultimately that's one um, circular, or one half of the butterfly. Ellen MacArthur Foundation has this butterfly diagram. And then the other half of the butterfly is the organic cycle, the bio-based cycle. So think of food, we eat food, we compost the remainder and it returns back and nourishes the new food that's growing. So within architecture, what we've been doing is merging both sorts of materials together and it makes them almost impossible to go back into either cycle. This is a glass um, countertop material which is made from recycled glass but can also be um, recycled after use and made into more countertops or glass bottles or jars. So it's a fully recyclable product. Um, the difference between something like this and another product that's also marketed as sustainable is this is glass that's been mixed with resin to make this top but it means that this is now unrecyclable and that can only go to landfill. I think the biggest problem with sustainability at the moment is the word I mean it is just a bit of a mouthful and um, it, I, I wish we had a better word. It's a tick, ticking boxes exercise just thrown out there. Our houses are What does that mean? It has no definition. It just means so many different things to so many different people. You just want to be using what you're currently using and not buying or getting rid of, of anything and just kind of keeping that 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 sameness. It does really feel like a, bro a broken record. Being is about being less bad. You can do anything, I suppose, a bit more but it's the kind of bigger question of what we should I was born in Orpington, in sub suburban London. My father died when I was when I was very young, and I think you know, all his sort of tools and things were were around in the shed, handling something and thinking of the generations that have handled it, how that is a design that has evolved over hundreds of years. I always felt that kind of connection with using my hands and making things being a kind of really worthy thing to do. I was um, four or five years old and I moved into a house that was where all the rooms were hexagonal. The windows were from floor to ceiling and the whole thing was built in a, in a hexagonal aluminium frame. Uh, the house was built in three weeks. This is 60 years ago. Uh, so, uh, yeah, boy, that inspired me, absolutely. Growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. We had to be quite resourceful. I grew up on a farm, so we had the benefit of basically space and stuff. We were always outside just building. We'd see calves being born, we'd see calves die. Like, we were really engaged I think and very lucky from an early age to see nature happening in front of your eyes. Relationships are everything our most important asset, our most important resource. There's a sense of purpose beyond profit, beyond the day to day. You're not on your own. I'm with you on this and I'm here to help. Here are some opportunities, here are the benefits I think they may have, here are the risks and here's how we're going to de-risk them. This huge transformation that we have got to go through has, has not got to be a, a going back, a preserving a sort of pre-industrial rediscovery. It needs to be articulated as, as a new adventure. by looking at ourselves. We can actually really drive change, constantly remaining open-minded and adaptable and never thinking that you know all the solutions yourself. You've got to open yourself up and allow people to criticise what you're doing, pick the gaps in what you're doing so you can be better. I'm not uh, the world's leading authority on this subject, 
I'm just trying to kind of work it out. We have to adapt as humans. I have an opportunity. I have a voice. I have a responsibility to go out there and to do my best on each building that we work on. Help them understand the value of that choice, um, not just in their own building, but in that contribution to society. Every building is unique. Every building has its era, has its own particular context. Some of them maybe took some sacrifices that now are gonna hurt us down the line. And it's the same, you know, in people's lives. You need to go in with the mindset of, how do I understand this building? What are the good things about it? What are the bad things about it? Why isn't this building delivering everything that you want? How can we work with what we've already got, as opposed to working against it. Handle it with a bit of love. Think about this context. Think about how you, as an individual, can make an impact in this world. Yeah.